Hello everyone and welcome back. American Civil War and UK history and the unfiltered historian. This is Fredericksburg Live 159 and we are at a very special location. And to tell you more, we have the unfiltered historian himself, Tyler McGraw. Take it away, Tyler. All right, guys. So we're back again here at the Slaughter Pen Farm. I know you guys may have seen the brief video we did here this morning where we talked just a little bit about what it was like. It was frosty out here. It's almost 60 degrees out here now, very replicative of what it was like during the actual Battle of Fredericksburg. Now, again, most of you hear about that weather and you see different sites. You go to the Sunken Road, you go to Prospect Hill, but do you ever come here to the Slaughter Pen Farm? Do we talk about what happens here at the Slaughter Pen Farm? Well, that's what we're gonna do today because this is a very important piece of the battle. There's a lot of chance for success here and there's a lot of uh, hiccups when it comes to communication, especially here at Slaughter Pen. Uh, some very notable characters today that we're going to talk about. One of those, George Gordon Meade himself and General John Gibbon, who will actually fight three of his brothers. Now, uh, if you remember correctly, John Gibbon is a North Carolinian that decides to stay loyal to the Union. And his brothers are just over there in that field in North Carolina regiments fighting for the Confederacy. So he's going up against three. This is a very personal day for John Gibbon. Now I'm gonna hold this or hand this over to Darren so we can flip the camera. You can see us, you can see the battlefield. Darren on you, whenever you're ready. Start. There we go. All right, so to sum it up and kind of build up to what's going on, if you look in this direction over here with my new unfiltered pointing stick, what we have over there is General George Gordon Meade with his Pennsylvania reserves. And they are preparing to launch an assault against Stonewall Jackson, his men are going to be over there holding a position. On this side of the field is where we're going to talk a lot about John Gibbon and what's going on with his men. Um, we look at three brigades. We have Nelson Taylor, we have Peter Lyle, we have Adrian Ruth. So I'm not going to focus too much on Meade and too much on Pelham here because we do plan to stop at other locations and talk about these guys. But I really want to highlight, since we're here at Slaughter Pen, John Gibbons' assault. It's a personal story, it's a great story, and it's very interesting what goes on at Slaughter Pen. Uh, I do want to start out by just thanking the American Battlefield Trust for preserving this wonderful piece of ground that we have today that really helps a visitor understand Fredericksburg. And I hope by the end of this video today, we are actually going to be filming the entirety of our walk today on the Slaughter Pen Farm, which is really cool because it's roughly a 90 minute walk um, for the average visitor, but we're going to try to do this quickly but not an information overload so uh we'll, we'll talk about the story itself we'll talk to you guys and just do a normal unfiltered video here but it's Fredericksburg 159. so at about 11 o'clock there's going to be a tremendous artillery duel or barrage if you will just about 12 45 Union Army will strike two caisson limber chests of the Confederate forces over there on the heights, which will cause a spectacle, if you will, where there is explosions and cheering, and Meade looks at that as an opportunity to take his men and burst into the finger of woods and cause that breakthrough that we'll talk about here in a little bit. But that catches Gibbon off guard over here. His men are laying down in the ground. And now he's going to have to follow up. They're mud caked, they're soaked. It's, it's December. The weather is starkly kind of similar to as it is today. But as they go forward, Nelson Taylor is leading the first attack forward. And Nelson Taylor will unfortunately have two of his regiments fall back, two remaining, and they need to have Peter Lyle's brigade to rush in and try to help Adrian Root. Or excuse me, uh, Nelson Taylor. Because Adrian Root's going to be the third one to come in and reinforce that assault there. But in this attack, as they're going forward and assaulting the North Carolinians there on the railroad, what a scene is this, this battlefield here. This battlefield plays a trick on you, okay? Well, one of the features we're actually walking up on now when we talk about this assault that takes place on Gibbons End is this Virginia ditch fence. It's an obstacle for sure. We see the canal at Fredericksburg, um, in the city of Fredericksburg, the canal ditch that's about 10 feet wide and six feet deep. And with, uh, due to some union engineers being able to actually drain this, it's uh, only got about three feet of standing water at the time of that. But this right here is a hell of an obstacle. And Darren, if you want to show them, just this, this is a natural, well, 
wouldn't say it's natural, but it's your, it's a fence. It separates properties. It's here to really keep cattle or livestock out of somebody else's yard. This is also the site for those that know about John Pelham, where Pelham will hold the Union Army at bay for a little bit with his one lone gun. And we will actually be visiting that location very shortly. But this is pretty much the center. Pelham is just over there, yes sir. And if you look back, you can already, you can see the road that is um, what would be known as the Bowling Green Richmond Stage Road. Today it's Route 2. But I want you guys to notice, and we'll swing the camera back a few times, that that road will disappear as we continue on our walk today. today uh, this walk is very focused on the terrain too, because at first glance, and you may have seen that um, on our previous video here this morning, how it looks very flat. Well, this ground is very good at proving that it's not very flat. And we'll see that as we get down towards the river. As they're over here. Pelham trains his cannon on a gun on a cannon, or on a, gun, on a uh, tree, excuse me. And that's how he's going to be able to feed that artillery into position here. He's sitting in a very low depressed area, um, almost like a bowl shape. And that allows for him to have such success. And actually Doubleday is gonna send men to try and dispatch this and get away from having to deal with such an artillery barrage that uh, Pelham is now causing these Union forces to endure. With that, I'm gonna just be quiet for a little bit and let Darren reflect on some stuff as we walk and let you guys as well and let Darren kind of show just some of the sights that we're seeing until we get to our next stop. But we don't wanna cut the video now. Wow, I'm just in awe of this place. You know, there's a, there's a lot of what ifs when it comes to like, what if we had reinforcements? Cause you know, one thing we're gonna learn is that me didn't have the reinforcements necessary to really follow up his assault and his breakthrough on the Confederate lines there over on the Post Prospect Hill. And I believe it's five Medal of Honors that are handed out here. So they're rightfully won here on this battlefield. But it makes it very unique to have such one field to have so many Medal of Honors brought out to it. And there's one of our wonderful Civil War Trail signs. Let's give uh, Civil War Trails a big Absolutely. shout out. You know, they are um, credited with being the largest open air museum. And it's so true. Uh, anywhere yeah, you see a Civil War Trail American sign, Battlefield Trust, so. it's great to stop at it. Yeah. Do you know what? That was really strange then. When I was walking up, it looked like the ground was going to dip down. Yeah. But it doesn't. Doesn't it? Or does it? Yeah, it's really strange. That's what I'm saying. So that's the thing you get here when you come out to this battlefield is that terrain feature just really messes with your head because at one minute you think it's going to drastically dip, one minute you think it's flat. But wait till we get down to the railroad cut where they actually um, fight, uh, John Gibbons men fight. It makes a hell of a difference to be able to stand down there and then look back up. Uh, this is um, really, like I said, the biggest opportunity for Union success during the Battle of Fredericksburg. Because over at the Sunken Road, which we'll visit later as well, we look at a 900-yard open plain that Union soldiers are attacking up to a very fortified stone wall. And the heights beyond that are lined with Confederate cannon and artillery. It's just, it's not really the most, of course, at first glance, well-thought-out attack. But at the same time, it is it's looked at as a diversion because this is where the attention should be focused on. A lot of communication delays. There's a lot of bickering, if you will, and just things that go against this part of the battle. Of course, me doesn't receive those reinforcements. I'm sorry if you're hearing an airplane. We do have a uh, airstrip, the Shannon Airport's just on the other side of the Slaughter Pen Farm. So it's kind of cool to come out here. It's another unique aspect of this battlefield is you get to watch planes take off every now and again. You get to watch trains go by every now and again, and it makes that battlefield just that much more unique. But if you're looking across, you might be able to see and denote that Virginia ditch fence that we spoke about just a few seconds ago. 
You can tell um, in the winter it's perfect because you really can tell and you can kind of see for yourself the the differences of terrain much more than you can when there's a full growth of crops out here. But absolutely, you can tell it's uh, almost like a swale. It provides defense. It provides an obstacle. So it's good and bad in both aspects. Um, again, sorry if we go quiet for a minute. We're just enjoying the walk, and we would like to have you guys along with us for the walk and the talk. Remember, guys, this is my first time here, so I'm sort of like. And Darren didn't yeah, walk out. Bob smacked at the moment. <laughs> no, you got. We only stood up over at the parking lot. Yeah. And filmed out on the field. Yeah. So you guys are going to get to see his reaction to the terrain that we're coming up on soon live and in person so if you've never been here either and i hope this isn't a spoiler alert no. um you'll get to see that as well and it, it's just it's amazing now one thing to note i know i said we can talk about mead's breakthrough a lot here but it might as well there's a swamp that mead is faced with uh in front of him there's a 600 yard gap in confederate lines maxi greg is really holding some of this at the same time so is james j archer and the swamp itself is, by Confederate forces, deemed militarily insurpassable. But don't don't test George Gordon Meade. He'll go through it. He takes his Pennsylvania reserves through it. And then when these Union troops break through the Confederate lines, initially Maxi Gregg thinks that they're Confederates because you're bogged down in a swamp. Your blue uniform has a hue of gray and mud color. So it's kind of understandable as to how you could be conceived as a confederate force um so of course maxi greg thinks that he's being assaulted by his own men or that there's confusion he rides down to kind of find out what's going on becomes mortally wounded when a union bullet will sever his spine i mentioned again there's something that tugs in your heartstrings really is that john gibbon is fighting three of his brothers here and i try to put myself in that position because i have brothers and sisters as well and just to think about having to go against them in a war uh, let alone leaving my state to you know it, it, we can go on for days about the feelings on that it, it's very 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 heart-rendering but it's it's a true story it's real this is what's happening here at the battlefield there's a great map on these things that we think again the american battlefield trust and civil war trails for these but to help us sort of show you what's happening we're currently standing on the flank of taylor's assault uh, the flank of the 11th Pennsylvania to be exact, and they're gonna be attacking Lane's North Carolinians who are directly to our front at this point. Now, when we're standing here and you look out onto the field, you can't really see the railroad, can you? Let's continue walking a little bit. Keep that in mind though, you're not able to really see it yet. And then one thing we're gonna do is when we get down to the railroad, I'm gonna have everybody sort of look up towards the road. And also, Darren, do you hear the road anymore? I can't hear it at all. No. We're not even that far from it. <clears throat> probably about like 200 yards 300 yards out that maybe a little more wow that is very you can't true. even hear it i cannot hear a thing guys no it's quiet you can hear my keys rattling on my yeah that's about it that's it that is really strange battlefield's good at that it, it plays that it's an acoustics thing as well I, I never really thought about it that way either as i'm walking out here i always just focus on the terrain change and how that plays out and guys thank you all again so much for joining in to fredericksburg live 159th hosted by the unfiltered historian and american civil war in uk history we have been planning and really really excited to bring this to you guys and it's just beyond incredible and be uh, you might have noticed that we was offline for a little while and that was because we got sidetracked we did and it was a good reason why we got sidetracked we went to go visit a friend of ours over at the cbbt office it was nice to see terry as always. And uh, two hours went by, and uh, yeah. <laughs> and we're like, we got to go to Slaughter Pen. Yeah. We forgot about that. Um, but yeah, big <laughs> shout out to them guys, because without them, a lot of these places would uh, fall right. into the wrong hands. And that's the wonderful thing about all these preservation is that they just do such a good job in this area, especially CDBT. We're trying to keep and retain what we have. I mean, look at this. Look at this field that we still have today. I've been told before, and it was really comical. That, oh, you always take pictures of farm fields. Mm -hmm. Just a field. Mm -hmm. Oh, they have the greatest slogan in the world. It's preserving dirt and grass. And there's a reason that we do that because this is hollowed farm fields. This is hollowed ground. It's not just a farm field. To the untrained and unknowledgeable eye, maybe. Yeah, maybe it is. 
if you haven't taken the time to study and understand what happens here. So of course I can see the just why you would say that, that we don't just take pictures of farm fields. There's stories behind these fields and there's reasons why we save them. Darren, what is, what's going through your mind, man? What are you thinking about out here? I'm just a little bit overwhelmed, I think, by the whole thing, you know, it's just, I've, I've just dreamt about this moment for so long and uh, actually walking here is just a little bit overwhelming for me. I must admit, and, and the welcome that I've been given by a lot of people while I've been here um, already, and it's only, this is my first day, you know, and uh, yeah, well, I'm I've been very, made very to... welcome. As you should, man, you've done a lot for our page too, the Unfiltered Historian would not be what it is without you and your continuous efforts to keep our page up to date with our This Day in History tidbits, which are like the greatest part about waking up every day almost, is just going straight to see what happened today in history, because Darren runs that so well. So, big thank you for that as well, man. Thank it's, you. Feeling the love, feeling the love, man. And you guys too, the guys that are tuning in and watching this, that have heard us blabber on about Fredericksburg for the past month and a half, two months now. But you're so glad this is our here. gift to you guys. <laughs> Again, like I said, sorry for the pause. The Fredericksburg 159th isn't just about talking the entire battle. Sometimes it's about enjoying the battlefield that we have. You know, not everybody can make it out to the battlefield on the 159th anniversary. So being able to, you know, have that broadcasted to you hopefully is worth something. We got another one of our beautiful signs here. Civil War Trails, big shout out. What time do we have? It is 12.36. In a few moments, we will be standing here at the exact time of the assault when Lee breaks through. So remember, those two limber chests are hit just roughly around 12.45. So with that being hit, it's just around 12.45. Bolts through the finger of woods, which you can almost see behind us here, actually. Jerry, if you want to spin that around real quick. Um, so I'm going to do an unfiltered point just for you guys for a second. It's a little beyond that building, but you can kind of see how the woods jut out. That's about where Meade has his breakthrough and where he's going to charge through. literally submerged underwater before and my friend joe and i walked through it pretty much in the water we were regretting that almost instantly there's a real so now we're getting pretty uh, pretty close to the railroad and as we're nearing that try to consider too that the assault that gibbon's going to undertake is literally where we are at right now there's Confederates on that railroad, on that rail bed. So those Confederates are now firing into the lines. And you can show them too, there's a plane taking off or landing, I'm not sure which. Sorry guys, I know we're sort of all over the place, but you're getting the best of this battlefield all in one video. History, airplanes, trains. Right at the time it was happening as well, guys. Yeah, and at the time um, Tyler, just explain a little bit about the two uh, wings of the army at this point, uh, the left and the right division. So Burnside's going to reorganize the Union Army of the Potomac of the outset of the campaign. To the right, center, and left grand division. Very large wings. Now, we're used to seeing sort of a core system, and we'll see that implemented again when Hooker takes over in spring of 63. Back to the... Uh, course but it, it really makes this army 
the large, or not really larger, but it almost feels like it is because you have an entire Grand Division in Fredericksburg, Center Grand Division also sort of in Fredericksburg. So then you have this left Grand Division out here on this sector, the southern portion of the battlefield. I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, right Grand Division was Sumner. Mm -hmm. Center was Hooker. Mm -hmm. And left would have been Franklin? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Sorry, I had to pick my brain there for a second. Um, so these guys are in command of the Grand Division. Again, much larger division than your average division that we see later on in the war, or early on in the war. That's just due to Burnside's restructuring, which in turn causes for some communication failures here. There's some big communication failures here. And again, I, I did bring this up in the podcast the other day. This is the this is supposed to be where the main attack is supposed right. to happen. The, the the attack of the wall is a feint. Right. But unfortunately, this doesn't because of the communication issues. This doesn't get supported properly the way it should do. And we will be going to the wall later, guys. Don't worry. I even think we're going to take a walk. We're going to probably do the here. Irish Brigade march up to the wall. Uh, well, as far as they could get, that is. And we will go behind the stone wall. I am just absolutely gobsmacked by the weather today. This is yeah. like mid December and it feels like early spring. But this is what this is what happened to some of these guys, particularly when we get over to the other side of the battlefield with the the stone wall. The weather is very similar, so they shedded their coats, and as we know, they're going to get stuck out there tonight. And I know this; I was out there last night, and the weather was similar when I landed yesterday afternoon. And the and the, and the temperature dropped so quickly this time of year. So these poor guys are stuck out on that field without a coat. It's gonna be bad. Uh, left there. Look at the terrain now. Oh my goodness, you can't even see down that bit. No. There's the uh, GA. It was five GA medals of medal? honor. Yep. Oh yeah. Another shout out to Civil War Trials and American Battlefield Trust for saving the land. So Lane's uh, North Carolinian, once Peter Lyle is able to reinforce Nelson Taylor's remaining regiment, uh, they're, they're going to open up another one of those murderous fires that we see here that was initially opened up on Taylor's regiment. Uh, and when Peter Lyle comes in, it brings up to uh, Union having about six regiments in place against Lane's North Carolinian here on the wall, or on the, wall, me, on the railroad. Ultimately, Adrian Root again is going to have to support that assault because even those six are going to falter because of the fact that Confederates do reinforce and also have that artillery at Bernard's cabins that are just wreaking havoc on the Union forces assaulting up here. We are very close to nearing the railroad bed and the, the real drastic terrain change that I wanted to show you guys. So thank you for bearing with us. We really appreciate it again. Just thank you for joining Fredericksburg 159. It's a very exciting time. If you guys have any questions at all, do feel free to comment and ask away or just your thoughts are also highly encouraged. I just can't get over how this land looks like it then drops. Yeah. Until you stand here, you don't realize. And I think too. And also, so when, when the Union Army's advancing across this field, if they don't see that ditch, what you was talking about. Right. That's, that's going to be a problem. It is going to be a problem. Because they're moving in the formation. They move in there. They, it's, right. They had you know, to be aligned because of me taking off so early. You caught given by surprise. So there's like a realignment. So they didn't know it was there, basically. So they get out there and they can't see it. And it's like, oh, right. Yeah. <sighs> Look at it. Yeah, I mean, it's... A little bit of Virginia history for you. Some agricultural uh, history. Another fantastic feature of these battles. So instead of using... Um, bushes like they use in the UK to separate the they're using this this instead yes I mean look you know imagine if you I mean you're marching in column that's going to be a pain in the backside for anybody yeah.
stop at Chase, though, it would be a pain in the backside. Do it in under formation, and this ground is fire. so deceiving. It's going to get worse, bud. Wow. In a good Oh, place. my goodness. There's a railway, uh, railroad. It just comes from nowhere. So imagine being a, um, a Union soldier in one of those assaults. And that railroad just pops up out of nowhere, like Aaron said. Oh, my goodness me. They have better protection, it seems, too, in this terrain, because you're just, you're fodder at that point. You're getting shot down wholesale because you're standing up in a plain open field. Not much protection also over here. However, it's still better than where I'm walking now. And again, the terrain is just changing and changing. If you look over here to your left, look at the change now. Mm -hmm. And and look at how thick that wooded area is. Absolutely. Can you sort of see? Can the you try it? You know, imagine an army, or you know, you get this uh, uh, through the wilderness parts. Uh, you know, like Chanceville and that. But you can't move an army through that sort of stuff. You know. No. I mean, this is nothing compared to the wilderness, probably. But you know, you get it. That's a, that's a that's a, a problem on its own, isn't it? You know. I think so. And also, what, what kind of noise is going on out here at the moment, would you would imagine? Well, is there a lot of, there's obviously a lot of cannon fire and oh, that. Oh, gosh, yes. That, that's the thing. That cannon barrage starts at 11 a.m. Um, now, with that, that's going to obviously be a deafening roar of artillery back and forth. We're just probably around 1245 now where those two limber chests explode. And it's noted that it created somewhat of a spectacle for both sides. Is it and like the 4th of July? Really you know, they almost, yeah, like the 4th of July. You're hitting a limber chest filled with ammunition and black powder. It's going to go up pretty big. And this this noise is enough to get me to see an opportunity to break through and run into the woods. So obviously, it's a, a cacophony of hell, if you will. Muskets being fired over here. The pop. Yep. It's just uh, lines of North Carolinians firing into the Union troops that are amassing. If you look back now, look how flat it became. Oh, my goodness me. <laughs> for one second it wasn't this flat at all we were literally just two seconds ago looking at a hill and guys there'll be loads of these flying we did. about we brought some mini balls with us to kind of show loads you of these popping about all over the place um, I wish I dropping some of the people like I yeah because we i have some of the ones that show what it would have been like to be hit by one um these are drop balls um drop mini balls as they were called they hadn't been fired so they retain its original shape well, Look, it's a, it's so now you can see flat over the ground. I don't get it. Yep. Just a minute ago, I couldn't see over this part. It was like, it looked like it dipped. Oh my goodness me. And there's wow. the railroad bed. Bernard's cabins are off and you can now see too. I love that the trees are gone. Or the leaves, excuse me, not the trees. I don't want the trees to go anywhere. No. But just the fields there, that was littered with Confederate artillery. And they were going to be causing that havoc I spoke on to the attacking Union columns that were standing literally in their attack position now. So Lyle, Nelson, Taylor, Root, all of these guys are attacking where we are standing and Lane's North Carolinians are right there on the railroad bed. We were literally at the epicenter. And hand-to-hand like -hand combat, that's yes. probably one of the worst things of the Civil War. We're talking butts of muskets, uh, fingers, anything you can use, gold, gouging eyeballs out probably, and of course the bayonet. But they didn't use the bayonet, but how do you know? Did they go around and look at the body afterwards? So Gibbon does make a brief breakthrough here. They're outnumbered and out of ammunition. The Confederates do fall back. Reserves do arrive, smash that Union line. So it, as possible as it could have been to have that success here, this doesn't happen for them, unfortunately. The Confederates do have ample reinforcements. They, they do. Yeah, they do yeah. end up supplementing Sorry. that. Giving you guys a brief look for a second as we're here. Some moments of reflections as well. Very beautiful battlefield.
And it's nice too because uh, it's recently been cleared of all the crops that are out here. And I'm hoping, I don't know if it's uh, still standing, but there's a swamp up ahead that's pretty replicative of what Mead would be attacking through. Again, guys, thank you all so much for joining Fredericksburg 159th. Presented by the unfiltered historian, American Civil War UK history. We are live at the Slaughter Pen Farm. Thank you for joining. We just had Darren checking out the railroad a little bit. I want you to hold the camera again, my friend, because we're gonna um, yes, let's go. We're gonna see some more drastic changes in terrain here. Uh, do be mindful. I know there's a lot of gopher holes over here, so don't mm -hmm. step in one of those. We don't need a casualty at the Battle of Fredericksburg today. No, no, we already had enough of those. <laughs> now, Darren. Left. Can you see the road anymore? Nope. nope. Can't see it, can't hear it. Nope. What does that say for the men who had to stand on top of this and the men here in the railroad? Who, you know, again, one of these deceptions of terrain. You have the low ground, the Confederates holding that low ground here. You have Union troops holding high ground. But in this scenario, who has the upper hand? Confederates do. So the Union troops are bulging out and they're going to stop somewhat on this rise here. And the Confederates are just laying into them with their volley fire. The artillery is reeking overhead and smashing into the lines that have formed on this little bluff, if you will, that nobody would have known was there. And that doesn't include something else that we're going to be going to very soon, right. which we're not going to go into too much detail because we're saving that for when we get there. But if you if you know this battle, you know what I'm talking about. And now I can't even see anything. I can't see the house. I can't see the road. I can just about see that sign there. This ground is the craziest ground I've ever seen. No, no. But it's slim, similar. Oh, my goodness me. How are you getting through that? No wonder Robert E. Lee thinks no one's going through it. No, I won't. Go ahead and get him a view of that. They won't break through there. Mm -mm. Well, they do. And they do indeed. So it's another unique aspect of Fredericksburg is to be able to still have at least a visual representation of something very similar to what Meade had to break through. And it goes to show the, I guess, the dedication these Union troops had to try and to break through Confederate lines. Um, they're going through this, which isn't very shallow either. If you're looking at it, it's a pretty, pretty deep swamp. You're going to lose a few boots in there, aren't you? Easily. Very easily. And folks, if you do decide to go see that, I do just advise caution because it may not look easy to fall into, but it's very easy to fall into. And again. <sighs> again, it changes. Yeah. I can't see actually nothing now. But do you see what I mean by being on the rail here? You have, mm -hmm. have a better advantage if you were to shoot up. Yeah. Wow. Imagine a lot of head wounds. Yes. Now we make our way back to the park. Which we will stay live for you guys until we get there so we can finish the duration of our walk as promised. And head to another site. And another. And back on stage.
Not that there was a full schedule to begin with. We're just kind of... We're just doing... Where we're yeah, well. yeah. yeah. It is what it is. We're out enjoying the anniversary. The weather. But again, it's about remembering yeah. what happened here. And what happened is very sad. But at the same time, we're getting to walk it. We're walking in in the footsteps of the of history, you know. And we are literally, we're actually walking back into our lines at the moment. We'd yeah. be getting uh, bayoneted back round the other way. You notice we're coming up a rise. Yeah, yes. and now yeah. it's like changes again, and like the road looks like it's miles away from yeah, here. Look at the this is crazy. I was waiting to use that word all day. That's you've been date. You've been dreaming you. about that word, haven't you, Tyler? I have, indeed. Oh my God! Look at and then and it looks like it dips yeah. down again and it goes up again and it goes up again. I'm gonna have you look again. It's like a wave. Look. look, it goes like a wave. That indeed it does. But you would never notice from the start. That's why I encourage you, if you ever come to the Slaughter Pen Farm, do not just sit in the parking lot and take pictures in there. Or, you know, I've noticed this is very, very popular with dog walkers. It is. Not that that's a bad thing. No, not at all. Because they're out during the countryside. So, um, during the... So, they do actually grow crops on here, do they? Absolutely. And that's what it was originally for, yeah? Mm -hmm. It was a farm, um, yeah. even after the war, up until the... American Battlefield Trust. And you can see there's there's bits of corn on the floor here. Feed corn, actually. Most of that's used for feeding livestock animals, stuff of that nature. Nice. Not the corn we're going to go to the grocery store and pick up to eat no. for dinner, for sure. No. This is our last marker, too, for the tour. And again, another massive, massive shout-out to Civil War Trails and American Battlefield Trust for saving the land. And here's another little map. I'm trying to get out of the way so you can see it. There's a shadow. Because this time of year the sun is so low. It's eerie how quiet it is. Yeah. You can see the traffic of the road but you can't even hear it. very quiet out here wow that was a moment it was guys if you're just now tuning in thank you all so much for tuning in to project square 159th live we are at the slaughter pen farm we are going our way back to the car to head to our next location you guys have caught anything so far also thank you for watching that if you haven't if you missed it there's going to be all of these videos posted as soon as they're done being filmed live there are uh two up i believe already now this will make our third for the day and yeah. there's a couple more stops yet isn't there tyler there's quite a few more we've stops, got plenty of time cool. yeah and some of them <clears> might be <throat> random out of nowhere stops that we haven't even talked about you know we're just kind of going with the flow of today and what speaks to us most about a battlefield where we think we uh really have something to share or just have a connection to is where we're going to go live from. And again, the terrain changes. Look. Yeah. It looks like it dips down. Well, we know it does now. <sighs> it's crazy. How drastically it does. And I still can't hear that road. No. Nope. Look, it's humming away over there, but you cannot hear a thing. Mm -hmm. It is the weirdest thing ever. Do it's almost those... like we're caught in like a, 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 a sound trap. A vacuum, yeah. But yeah, it's really weird, guys. I mean, I can hear obviously a plane in the sky, but yeah. I can't hear it's anything else. Warmer as we've been out here. I am it's, sweltering at the moment. Yeah, it's not cold. I mean, he was actually trying to bake me in his car this morning at 200 <laughs> it was degrees. Cold. Um, it, it was cold, and I said, "Mate, you can't cook me and eat me." Well, you told me. Um, I, we we took the mic out of Anthony Hopkins, didn't we? And then we went, you know, like the noise. But um, yeah. Anyway, this is Unfilled Historian, guys, so we do go off on a tangent sometimes. Apologize. Yeah, I was only trying to bake um, him because he told yeah. me he didn't like cold tea. Or iced tea so oh, I hate really cold tea. Cold. And yet again, there it is. He can't help himself, can he, guys? Mm -hmm. He has to bring up I'll tea. I'm going to stop at the store so I can get some tea. <laughs>
just so he can dump it in the Rappahannock River. But we're not really going to do that because that would get us in trouble. Yeah, everything I say is theoretical when it comes to the dumping of the tea in the harbor. Unless. Don't even think about it. But you did make me a nice coffee this morning. I'll give you that. Oh, good. I'm glad. What were you talking about? The donut shop? Yes, there? that yeah, is yeah, very it's, good coffee. It's, you know, it's nothing fancy, but it, it does its job. And guys, can I just give a quick shout out to the uh, the Battlefield Calf? Because I had the most amazing breakfast That's this right, morning. Yeah, we ate lunch at the battle, breakfast and breakfast. I'm definitely going back tomorrow. Absolutely. Okay, that walk may have actually had me a little hungry. Yeah, me too. It made you okay. We were talking yeah. about as we were coming to do this talk. I'm not really that hungry. I could pass. And again? Yeah, now I'm like, eh. The terrain changes again. It looks flat now. So we may, um, depending on what we decide, we might take a lunch break and then come back and do uh, a filming at a few locations. Seeing how our time is when we get back to the car. So we're not far away from it all now. And what's on the agenda? Okay, hello. Ah, it's such a nice little It is lovely, yeah. So anything else you want to add before we wrap this up, Tyler? I just, I wanted to highlight the importance of this, this particular site at Fredericksburg. Because again, it's often missed by a lot of visitors because the, the main story focuses on the stone wall and the sunken road and Marie's Heights and the river crossings. And not that this gets no attention at all, but it gets little attention. And I think the main part of the battle happens here. So there is a, there's a need, I think, for more people to come out here and actually see this ground, walk this ground, to better understand why this is the most possible success that the Union Army could have had. The terrain definitely helps a lot, too, in understanding this battlefield, knowing that it's not just a flat field. Because it looks like it again, doesn't it? Completely flat. Yeah. But we know it's not. We all saw it with our own eyes. We know that it is not a flat field. Uh, but again, it's, it's, it's that revelation, if you will, of how the terrain changes and it undulates. Second time, got to use that word. <laughs> Sorry. There you, you go, look, again. he's really happy with himself now, isn't he? I Bless am. his little heart. Are you after a certificate four. or something? I'm counting myself on four undulations today. There you go. That's actually the story, just, just for him. But no, guys, um, I don't really have much to say anymore on this. I, I just... And incredibly thankful you guys have joined us for this walk today and we have much more to say when we get into town for sure well again guys thank you for joining in and tuning in we'll see you very very soon i'm going to leave you with this thought of the battlefield at slaughter pem farm <laughs>